Hello, this is Carolyn from Carolyn's Paper Therapy. I wanted to share with you today my family recipe journal. Uh, my daughter has been uh, watching me make all these journals and uh, said she'd like to have one with recipes in it that I've made over the years, which is really kind of funny because uh, they were, as growing up, they were lucky to get fish sticks and uh, mac and cheese for supper. But anyway, I was the queen of the 30 minute supper preparation. But there's a few things that she remembers that I've included in here, and I'm sure she'll enjoy having it. Um, the main pages, background pages, are from the design box called Grandma's Kitchen Journal. And these little um, fussy cut labels that are dictionary um, labels are also from, are from my porch prints called Fussy Cut Baking. <clears throat> this little booklet here, mini book, is from My Porch Prints, and I made a whole bunch of these, and I just thought this looked cute stuck on the front here. It unties and actually um, opens up to a little book. This one happens to feature bunnies and places to write. So that's glued down, and uh, just look cute on the front here, so get it tied back. I've trimmed this with some uh, crocheted uh, lace and um, cheesecloth, made a ruffle out of the cheesecloth that I coffee dyed. This journal consists of uh, four eight and a half by 11 sh sheets cut with each section a little bit shorter than the one before so that when it closes, they come out even. I printed them double-sided cardstock and all of them are from that design box, Grandma's Kitchen Journal, digital files. As I was getting all this together, I pulled out a bunch of my recipe books and uh, different uh, boxes that I have with recipes filed in them. Tons of recipes that I never used, but thought they sounded good. And I um, also found a, an old book, recipe book, this is it, for your hot point electric range, which is probably from I don't know, probably from the 50s. And I grabbed some artwork out of here by just copying it on my printer. As you'll learn going through here, I, I'm sorry, but I have a story that goes with everything, so you'll have to put up with that. Um, this, These little old-fashioned 50s looking ladies are from that book I just showed you. I thought they were cute tucked in here. Here's one cut on the side here. Uh, this recipe for chess pie. This beef casserole recipe is from a friend of mine. She wrote it out for me in probably 1972, and the paper that it's written on is all uh, broken and stuff, and I, I did copy it, and um, when I copied it, you can see the color that it was. It was off aged from all that time ago, but I do make this one quite a bit. This is my pumpkin pie that I make on um, Thanksgiving. And this is just a tag that was included in the kit so that there's a little bit of space to write some things down for her, for my daughter. I made a pocket out of this postcard. I love the red plaid. Uh, it's trimmed on some of the pages, and I, then I used it to back some of my recipes. This page features the bread, and um, it, I used this, uh, this uh, tag here to make a side pocket, and um, with some cheese pictures, I used my 
scissors, zigzag scissors to make this look like a stamp. This is sausage balls uh, that we make for special occasions that are nice for appetizers for small parties. This is my veg all chicken pot pie recipe. I make that a lot. It's an excellent recipe. Um, these labels, I'm not sure where I got these labels. Anyway, this one says, nothing says home like smells, the smell of freshly baked goods. Put a belly band on this page. There's a bunch of stuff in here. This is goulash that I used to make when we lived in Florida. This is a squash, recipe, squash casserole recipe uh, that my mother wrote out. That's her handwriting. My husband used to make bread many years ago, and I just happened to have a handwritten um, recipe for his whole wheat bread. So I copied that and put this in here for Amber. My daughter's name is Amber. This was copied out of that book I showed you, and I put a tab on it. On the back is a recipe for kumquat jelly, and uh, we used to, when we lived in Florida, we had a small orange grove, and we had some kumquat trees that were just loaded, and uh, so we made this jelly, and um, I gave this recipe out to people whenever they would buy the kumquats from us. This comes from a, a cookbook called From Muffins to Margaritas, Florida's Finest Inns. And um, there's a story behind that cookbook. My daughter and I went to St. Augustine to stay in a bed and breakfast and we knew how much it was supposed to cost. And when we got there, the, the woman's husband checked us in and he charged us a whole lot less than what we were supposed to pay. And we felt kind of bad about that, so we went back and checked on it with his wife. And so she, of course, she charged us more, what we were supposed to pay in the first place, and then gave us each, my daughter and I, each one of those recipe books. But in it, it has this easy brunch casserole. And I started out making it on Christmas morning because you can put it together the night before and then just stick it in the oven. It takes an hour for it to cook. Uh, I serve it with fruit salad, fresh fruit salad, and uh, biscuits and strawberry jam. But I also started fixing it on Easter because it was an easy thing to come home and pop in the oven after church. This says biscuit shortcake, muffins, etc., with baking powder. That's a, just a little tab here, and I've made a top tuck out of it. And in this one, I have a, oh my, my pink salad, pink fluffy salad, Amber calls it. Apparently, I've been making it since 1973, and I, this is what the recipe was actually on a calendar page, uh, all ripped up and folded over and put in my recipe box. So I wanted to make sure and leave that date on there because that was actually two years before Amber was even born that I started making that salad. It's a favorite of my family. Back in 1969, my friend and I, Carol, we got married on two weeks apart. And so a lot of the people in town had um, different kind of uh, parties for us, showers and this, one of the ladies had a recipe shower, which we thought was just totally dumb because we wanted gifts. But anyway, I got a, got a lot of good recipes there. And this is the card that they put their recipe on. And then they gave us a recipe box and had all the cards in there. This is for Impossible Pie. I'm not even sure I've ever made it, but it sounds really good. This is another one of those definition tags with some cheesecloth underneath it. And then I just stuck a tag in this circle. I put a tab on this page, page for goodness bakes. A 
Now this page has quite a few recipes in this pocket here. Let's see what we have. We have Magic Peach Cobbler. We have Quick Rolls, which are delicious yeast rolls that my uh, mother-in-law used to make, and I've made many times. This is in her handwriting. This is Blackberry Cobbler I made a few times. Uh, we had a, a blackberry bush here in, in Kentucky, where I live, and um, Roy wanted me to make blackberry cobbler, so this is the recipe I use for him. This is a recipe for Janet's pie. It's a, a jello, um, cool whip kind of pie that a friend of mine who used to work with me in my antique shop, she brought it one day and then shared with me the recipe. And this is just a tag. I told you everything had a story, it does. This circle here just has some tags in it that say I sugarcoat everything and then this is just a little um, tag here that can be written on. This little girl, I fussy cut her out from, uh, let's see, This is from My Porch Prince Fussy Cut Baking. And I've used, here's another one here. This little girl here is from that digital kit. And this girl, I just went looking for some ephemera that I could put in here. And so I got that from My Porch Prince off of Etsy. This tag, this tag is from um, one of Angela Kerr's baking kits. Baking is life, so when you describe what you're making, you must describe life. Do you see? It's not just recipes. I made two pockets here. This I use this plaid paper that I like to make a large pocket. Let's see what's in there. I made a tab out of one of these uh, definition tags. Oh, this is my, oh, this is the center of the book and this is my Thanksgiving stuff. Um, some of it is my Thanksgiving stuff that I make every year. Uh, this is sweet potato casserole taken from my church cookbook. They used to have an autumn fair at dinner uh, every year to raise money for the uh, mission, uh, the ladies, uh, donations to the community and this is that recipe and this one is out of the church cookbook cranberry salad and you use fresh fresh chopped up cranberries delicious and it lasts a long time and it's very tangy and wonderful to have with Thanksgiving dinner Let's see what we got here. This is my green bean casserole. This is my mother's recipe, or one that she shared in the church cookbook. And I've modified it a little bit, but um, this is what I make also for Thanksgiving. This recipe is for apple cider. Uh, I used to serve hot mulled apple cider in my shop whenever I had uh, Christmas open house and anniversary open house. Everybody loved my apple cider, so that's the recipe for that. I think I got it out of the Betty Crocker cookbook. And this is just a little recipe card. This up here is... Um, I clipped it on because I didn't have a pocket. Uh, it didn't. It didn't stay just right. So anyway, this uh, is just a card for writing recipe on. This here. This is special. This is my list of all the 
ingredients and things that I need to shop for when I'm getting ready to have, uh, get ready to cook my Thanksgiving meal. And one year, I took this list and I went and I shopped and shopped and shopped and come home and had all this stuff. And I had forgotten the turkey because turkey wasn't on the list. So there it is up at the top with an exclamation point so I don't ever forget the turkey again. And then this is just a list of the recipes that I use for Thanksgiving and where I get them from. But I've also got them in here too. This just slides back down in this pocket. And then I clip these up at the top. This little tag says secret family recipe and it's kind of a joke at my house. I call my hamburgers my famous hamburgers and and anytime I post about them on Facebook, everyone wants to know my recipe because my family loves my hamburgers. They say they're the best hamburgers ever. And this is my secret recipe, which is kind of funny. But anyway, um, I want to include it in here um, in case uh, Amber or her son ever want to make them just like Mama did. These two are kind of jokes. Um, uh, when Amber was young, we lived on a road and she had a couple friends on the road there. One of them was Cecile. And every time I mention anything on Facebook about cinnamon rolls, she says, oh, I remember your cinnamon rolls. They were the best things ever. And so I wrote out the recipe for my special cinnamon rolls, which are Pillsbury cinnamon rolls in a can. And I described exactly how I made them. And at the end, I say share with others after removing center one for myself. And this uh, one time, Amber's friend Noel was at our house, and she asked me how I got my bacon so straight, because their bacon was all always all jumbled up. So I wrote this for Noel just as a joke, how I keep my bacon straight when I cook it. This is another little '50s woman out of that cookbook, and this one too. When we first moved back to Kentucky, we bought a house built in 1890, and, um, or, yeah, 1890, and the l lady must have loved to cook because there were hundreds of cookbooks, and I kept a lot of them for a long time, and uh, I've since gotten rid of them, and I wish I hadn't now that I'm doing junk journaling, but anyway, I kept a couple, and these came from that book I showed you. On this page, I just have these clipped up here at the top. These are just little journal cards. This is an envelope that flips open. I decided to use it as a flip out pocket. And in it is a copy of a recipe that my daughter brought me, wrote out and brought, brought home one time to me. She wrote it on her um, school paper and it's for dump cake. I know most of you already know about dump cake, but it's the best cake ever and easy to make. And she wrote dump cake in her little fancy writing and says, please make it, make it mom soon. And that's the recipe for it in her own handwriting. It's the definition of coffee, definition of baked beans, this says, if baking is any labor at all, it's a labor of love. A love that gets passed from generation to generation. And that's what we're doing here. This has the recipe for my pecan bars. Uh, that's something that I always served at my open houses also and were a favorite, so I included that in here for Amber. Here's another one of those little 50s ladies up on her stool, mixing bowl. I kind of did a little collage on this page, and I had to put this in sideways because it was too wide, but this is a, uh, we called it Mother's $100 fruitcake. She 
I mentioned this past Christmas that I loved that fruitcake and she hadn't made it in a long time. My mother is 94 years old and so she dug out this recipe and we were, Amber and I were running everywhere trying to get the ingredients that it calls for. So uh, we called it her $100 cake because uh, it really took a lot of stuff to make. This is a piece of ephemera from my porch prints and a little piece of cheesecloth. I like to ruffle it like that. This is the cover of that cookbook I showed you. And I had some ribbon that kind of matched this red and, and beige and then um, this lace, cotton lace. And I made a flip out of this. And um, up here on the top, uh, I used this plaid as a background and this is a journal card glued on, and this back here is a tea bag, and it's a new one. I ordered these new unbleached tea bags, and I thought they would make nice pockets in my journal, and I put a couple of tags down in there. And here at the bottom, I've used a postcard as a pocket, and it has Becky's Pound Cake recipe in it. This is another cake that my mother uh, loves to make and always has it on hand when there's any company and we just keep going and getting a slice of it because it's wonderful. And Becky was one of her best friends back when, well forever, but they became friends back when I was just a little girl. So that's a special recipe. And here's the back cover. This looks like I glued and sewed all this on, but I didn't. It's printed on the page. And I have signed it, Family Recipes Made With Love, Mom 2022. So I hope you've enjoyed this and will be inspired to uh, go through your recipes and maybe put one of these together for your family. Um, it was a lot of work to pull all that together, but it was fun and I'm glad I did it. Um, Amber will be thrilled. I'm gonna go through it with her and tell her all the stories and then I will post this video after she's seen it. So as you go through each day, remember every day is a gift. Every day is a brand new spanking new day to do something wonderful, to find the joy in the day and share it with everyone you meet along the way. So I hope you have a good day and until next time, see you soon.